turn it over under. Hello, my wonderful friends. That is, of course, a mix simultaneously between swell wonderful, sweet wonderful, and super and wonderful. So maybe it should be wonderful. Whatever. Hello, it's time for another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. We got a whole lot of exciting news this week, as usual. So let's get started. Okay, I know plenty of you are probably a little bit bored of the Switch Pro rumors by now. They're really, really ramping up. Here's the thing, though. I, I hate it whenever people are like, this thing confirmed? With like a question mark? Like the evidence is so strong. Does this confirm it? Whereas like nothing technically can confirm it until it is literally confirmed explicitly by the company. Here's the thing though, whatever the next step down is, however close you can get to confirming it without actually confirming it straight from the horse's mouth, that's where we're at with the Switch Pro. As I've said before, the more the rumors mount, the more industry insiders say it's a real thing, the more their stories all work together. It, this is the latest one. This is a really big one. I still don't know where, I don't know why this information is just publicly made when Nintendo hasn't announced anything. I don't know why it's such a poorly kept secret, but everybody and their mother knows that apparently the Switch Pro is coming because Nintendo is planning on purchasing a bunch of seven inch displays from Samsung. Uh, these are the rigid non-foldable types. Um, it is a 720p screen, but it is an OLED screen and all the other stuff that people have been saying, you know, 4K support, I'm still not 100% sure that's gonna really mean 4K support. Maybe, whatever, we don't know too much about the thing itself, but we do know that Nintendo is about to order a whole bunch of seven inch OLED screens, 720p. So yeah, and then like another person even said, okay, no, no, I'll, I'll keep, save that for a minute. First, let's focus on that screen. You know, I could go on and on about it. Yes, I am disappointed by 720p. I know it's a small screen, but even on the original Switch, I don't know if maybe I just hold it closer to my face than some people, because I don't like to strain my eyes, but like, you know, it works fine. Um, but I feel like any bit, like it's on the threshold of not working fine. You know, I can still see the pixels. And if the screen is bigger, like I assume this means the Switch itself will remain the same size, but the screen will be bigger. The bezel will be smaller. There'll be less room around the screen. And if that, if it's the same resolution and it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna be even easier to see the pixels. So yes, I'm disappointed by that. I know it's a cost saving measure. I know it's not the most important thing in the world in handheld, but I mean like, I don't know. My phone is 1080, my phone's probably, well, all the phones I've had have been higher than 1080, and they're even smaller than the Switch's screen. So it's frustrating, but OLED, that is really, really cool. I actually just recently, finally, got myself an OLED TV, and it is glorious. Burn-in is a bit of a concern, but I don't think that's gonna be as much of a concern on a handheld when you're turning it off whenever you're not using it or whatever, um, but it means the colors and the contrast are gonna be more vibrant and wonderful than ever. It's gonna save on power because, you know, the, the, pic the individual pixels that aren't lit up aren't drawing power, it's a whole thing. So anyway, that's a whole thing. Another insider is saying that uh, they've heard of at least a few exclusive games for it. And I know I've been talking about, it. I don't want that. I really, nobody wants that. <laughs> nobody wants the exclusive games um, because you know, you don't want to split the user base. Nintendo has been selling so many Switches, so many Switches, and then to tell all of them, hey, all you tens of millions of people who just got Switches, you can't play this new game. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to be like the 3DS where it's just a, uh, just a few select titles, just a few little ports, you know, that wouldn't have existed otherwise or something. I don't know, but I don't want this whole entire roundup to be just a Switch Pro thing. But basically, yeah, they're gonna start production in a few months. It's it's all but confirmed at this point. Furukawa's been doing a good number of uh, interviews and such recently, and a few little good tidbits have come out of some of them. Uh, when asked about cloud gaming, uh, he basically said like, you know, the obvious answer, no, Nintendo's not really doing much with that. I mean, you know, that's like kind of the new thing and Nintendo's never on the new thing. <laughs> They're always on the old thing. They take a while before they want to, um, but they like to wait until the tech is really there and cloud gaming tech is not really quite there yet. The internet infrastructure isn't there yet. Um, he did say something uh, interesting though. He said specifically, we're working on making more people gamers first, you know? Like we're trying to get people hooked into our <laughs> our ecosystem of games. Like that's the most important thing right now is getting consoles in people's hands and getting them playing. And uh, 
That makes a whole lot of sense. That's a very, I don't know, it's a pretty forward-thinking thing. And I, one could argue that cloud gaming could open up more gaming to more people because if you don't have to buy a system, you're more likely to just pick up your phone and play a game. Um, but I still see what he's saying, and it makes sense for Nintendo. He also said a little bit about um, Nintendo's approach to developing characters, especially those from, uh, you know, classic IPs that people have grown up with. And uh, he basically just talked about how Nintendo is very careful about that. They're very, very mindful of uh, preserving the legacy of some of these characters that people did grow up with. And I think, like, again, I don't want to go into a whole big, huge discussion here. Um, I think that's that's a noble cause in a way. Uh, but coming from Nintendo, that's they're <laughs> they are too careful about it. I'm all for being careful. I'm all for for proper preservation and stuff. You know, don't, don't just go wacky with it um, and just kind of ruin the character. But come on, you got to do something with the character. You're, you're sitting on all these IPs and all these characters you don't do anything with. You don't do anything with, and that's very very frustrating. So I mean, can you can you be a little less careful? Can you <laughs> can you? potentially sacrifice the the memories of all these beloved characters. Ah, just a little, just a little teeny tiny bit. I'd like that a whole bunch. Uh, anyway, so we had uh, the big presentation for Pyra and Mithra. Sakurai came out and, and did all that. And of course that came with reveals for me fighter costumes. And uh, there it is, Monster Hunter. There it is. There's the deconfirmed. There, just, just like with Sephiroth, just like with the Geno. Man, I don't even care that much about Monster Hunter. I just, I, I do not get it. I do not understand. I don't get it. Why is there no Monster Hunter rep? Why is Rathalos a boss for no reason? For seemingly no reason, there's a Monster Hunter boss in the game, but there's no character. Why? <laughs> I don't get it. They're doing, I don't know, like all these different picks are from these, I, Monster Hunter's huge on Nintendo. It's a big thing. People love it. But now, me fighter costumes instead. We get three of them. So that's nice, that's that's pretty cool, but gosh, if I were a big Monster Hunter fan, I would be so angry right now. <laughs> just be like, why? I just, it doesn't make any sense in the world to not have Monster Hunter. In Smash, oh well. Sakurai gave us a, a very fun little tidbit. Apparently, uh, he likes to collect figures uh, for the various characters so that the team can kind of just like, I don't know, just to like start to get a feel. I mean, you know, they're, they're doing a lot more than just looking at the figure to design the characters, but just to give it a little good glimpse of it in a 3D space. And he says that he has figures for unreleased characters. And uh, and that's interesting. That means that all the characters have figures. I don't know, I guess basically everyone has a figure if you look hard enough <laughs> nowadays. Um, but like, why would he say that? Because now you're gonna get all these people wanting to launch these like Mission Impossible missions, like to break into to Nintendo and try to get to Sakurai's desk because the just the, the beautiful future secrets, the precious secrets are just in that one drawer. I'm gonna get the cleaning crew in there just being like, oh, there's the drawer, there it is. Anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. Monolith Soft is hiring for their next game, which is fun. Monolith is always always working on the next thing, which is very, very cool about them. And um, apparently they're they are specifically looking to hire students uh, who are graduating in 2022. Like basically university students in Japan coming out of that exact class. It's very specific. I don't know if that just means they're like, not quite ready to hire yet. They wanna be hiring next year. Um, but I always think it's great when a company has an initiative to uh, hire students, you know, fresh talent. It's cool. The Wii U has received its first firmware update since 2018. Um, it, it cites uh, just stability improvements. There may be some sort of deeper reason to try to prevent hacking or something, but I can't figure any of it out. And I don't really know, but for whatever reason, Nintendo just wanted to give the Wii U another update. Okay, cool. The BAFTA Awards are coming up and Animal Crossing has been nominated for a number of different categories. Uh, best game obviously is in there. When is it ever in an awards show without at least being nominated for best game? Um, yeah, yeah, a good few uh, categories. If I might indulge in the slightest bit of snark, um, game design, I like Animal Crossing, I like New Horizons, I think it's a well-made game, but when I think game design, I think like all these different linking mechanics and like levels and stuff, I wouldn't, I mean, it's a well-designed game, but I wouldn't call it like a big, I, I don't know, an achievement in game design. It's more like a toy, it's more like a product, you know what I mean? I don't know, maybe that's just me, maybe I'm wrong. Like I would nominate Age of Calamity before I would nominate Animal Crossing just because it's got all these, 
different systems that work together and the way that the moves work with the world and the level design. I don't know, whatever, who cares? <laughs> Speaking of Animal Crossing, Hori is releasing a uh, another series of Animal Crossing related stuff. <laughs> There's always more more stuff from Hori and always more stuff for Animal Crossing, but if you're still looking for some a year later or whatever, then uh, here you go. Okay, so this is very funny. This is, uh, <laughs> so pretty recently, uh, we were talking about uh, Stop and Swap, which was like a, a proposed feature for the N64, where you'd be playing one N64 game, you yank it out and shove in another one, and the games would like share data together, and it was just too dangerous and not a good idea at all. Um, but apparently, such a technique can be used for uh, some speed running, and someone has broken a record technically in the any percent category for the original Paper Mario on N64, um, but a significant amount of the run involves playing Ocarina of Time instead. <laughs> and someone was making a joke that speedrunners have broken Ocarina of Time so thoroughly that they are now using it to break other games. It's just some way that the data works. It basically, you do a thing in Ocarina of Time, you switch over to Paper Mario, and it just cuts straight to the end credits, which is very, very funny. I think <laughs> that's very interesting. It's probably not gonna be um, allowed in the official any percent category for Paper Mario just because like, I mean, you know, you're not even playing Paper Mario most of the time. I think sometimes if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're too good at going straight to the credits, it's not even fun anymore. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna have its own category or what, um, but that was pretty interesting. A little string of Pokemon news as usual. Post Malone had his uh, Pokemon concert. It's uh, is interesting. It's, it's fun. I don't know. I mean, like, his, his little CG depiction wasn't wasn't too bad. It tracked him pretty well, and he, it was weird. Weird. Yeah, that's the word. Just kind of like floating around all these different like locales and a bunch of Pokemon just kind of like staring at him creepily while he sings. It was weird. I don't know. The audience seemed to be enjoying it. The fake the fake audience noise. They thought it was a great time. So I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure it was cool. And uh, Pokemon is promising more music to come. Katy Perry. And I don't know if that's gonna be more virtual concerts like this or something else, but uh, there you go. Microsoft just held their Microsoft Ignite 2021 conference and uh, basically uh, Niantic, the, you know, the people who make Pokemon Go, uh, they were there and they were looking at the HoloLens technology and they kind of created like a proof of concept demo uh, for how Pokemon and Pokemon Go could work in the future using HoloLens. And that's, that's the thing, it's, it's the AR thing. It's the augmented reality, it's the glasses. Um, it's the kind of thing that like, it's been happening slowly and I'm kind of waiting for it to take over the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm kind of waiting for the day when everybody is wearing the glasses because the whole entire world is your, what is your computer playland and anything can be displayed in any way that you want and magical wonders can be all, I mean like that's the future. It's not even in VR, it's in AR. Um, and so yeah, basically like, you know, Nintendo doesn't have a doesn't have a big VR or an AR thing going, so they go to Microsoft and they're like, yeah, we're looking at this HoloLens and here's a, I don't even know if it was tied to a real thing or if it was just, I think it's just a proof of concept, but you know, it shows like there's a Pokemon and you give them a little, give them a little snack or whatever. Anyway, that was kind of interesting. Pokemon Unite is uh, having their uh, beta in Canada and they're trying real hard, this is where it's confusing. Like don't have a closed beta. Like this, the, look at the age of the internet that we live in right now. It's literally an inevitability that people are gonna share this stuff. They're gonna, you can't stop them. So basically people doing the beta have been sharing Pokemon Unite footage and stuff all over the place. Uh, Pokemon, they, they are doing a fair job of uh, taking stuff down. Um, but if you want more info on Pokemon Unite because they're being weirdly tight-lipped about it, the info's out there. This, uh, some of this stuff has confirmed the uh, costume purchases and some of the other microtransactions and stuff that were already kind of leaked a while back. So that's fun. <laughs> a Japanese company is creating Pokemon styled lures, like for actual real literal fishing. And um, their, their choices were interesting. I think I would have gone with a little more fishy. You got, uh, you got Kyogre, which is cute. It's great, I love Kyogre, but he's also very big. And then uh, Pikachu. <laughs> I guess because it's a Pokemon thing. So Kyogre and Pikachu, if you really want to add some Pokemon related flair to your actual IRL fishing adventures, then there you go. If you have got yourself a very, very nice Pokemon card collection or anything else, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, baseball cards, whatever, um, there is a UK company that is making custom card cases, uh, like 
completely custom for any specific person, specific collection. These like super nice, like museum quality display cases. This is pretty cool. I do imagine it's probably pretty expensive. You can't even get prices on the website because it's all custom. <laughs> you gotta tell them what you want, but they can do it in any way you want. So if you got, you know, again, you got a cool Pokemon card collection, you wanna show it off. They can do all sorts of different things, not even just uh, like cabinets, they, but they also do like the pictures and I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Similarly, if you got a bunch of old Nintendo cartridges lying around, there's a company called Book for Games, and they specialize in creating these uh, little, uh, uh, it looks like a book and it goes on your bookshelf, but it's a way to store your cartridges. Um, so that's kind of cool. I'm kind of, it's, I kind of thought if you were gonna do a thing like this though, you'd want to like somehow display what the game is. You know, I would think they would have like versions of all these like class, you know, oh, here's the, the Legend of Zelda NES one, but instead it's just kind of a case and you can't really see what's in it. So that's a little weird. I don't know why I'm talking about it here. I don't know. It's, I mean, cause you could put, you put NES games in it. So it's kind of in Cinderella. I don't know. I just put it on here. I just thought you'd think it was interesting. Okay. I'm <laughs> trying my best. No More Heroes is teaming up with limited run games to create physical editions of the first two uh, No More Heroes games. Previously, these were only available as downloads on the eShop. So uh, this is pretty cool. And they've actually got uh, multiple to choose from. You've got like a regular edition and then like a special uh, collector's edition for each game. So if you want, you can get the super expensive crazy both games special package. And finally, Super Nintendo World in Orlando, Florida has been uh, delayed. Like the opening has been pretty dramatically delayed. They were already quite a few uh, years out. It got delayed into 2024, and now they're saying it's delayed until 2025. And um, this is, a, I mean, it's not, I guess it's not surprising. It, it, it sounds like they just, they really had a lot more work to do. Um, they're putting it in as a part of a larger expansion of the theme park. So that probably makes sense that they're, you know, they're, they got their, <laughs> toes in a bunch of pies right now. Is that a thing? I don't know, they got, whatever. They're working on a bunch of stuff. So it's gonna be quite a while. Um, I don't know how this is going to affect the California one. I know there's one going uh, going into California as well. I completely unclear on the timeline there. It sounds like that might be coming sooner, but the, uh, the delay in Orlando, that could cause a delay in the LA one. Really not sure, but I can only hope, 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 hope that we get the one in LA at least a little bit sooner than that because 2025, you gotta be kidding me, four years, that is rough. I wanna go to Super Nintendo World, especially if they end up making a uh, larger Super Nintendo World with a lot more different Nintendo properties. Uh, I could go on about this, but uh, as, as I mentioned, it sounds like the one in Japan is kind of a smaller one, so it's just focused on Mario, but it, they, there have been some plans that make it look like there's a bunch of other stuff planned. I don't really know though, we'll have to wait and see. And that, my friends, is the end of the Nintendo News Roundup for this week, we did it! We finished, we did it everybody. We made it through another week. See you next week.